Okay, conclusion. So the point x, y that lies on the graph of y equals x, y, sorry, y equals f of x, is transformed to the point. So anything happen to the x value? No. So it becomes the point x and then 1 over y on the graph of y equals f of x. Right? We just take 1 over the y value. If y equals f of x is a continuous function, so continuous means you could draw it without lifting your pen, uh, or pencil, right, because we do math with pencil, then y equals f of x will have a vertical asymptote wherever f of x is equal to 0. Right? So if the original function has a y value of 0, the reciprocal, because you try and do 1 over 0, which you can't do, right? so you get a vertical asymptote. The in <coughs> invariant points for the transformation are the points where the blank coordinates of y equals f of x are. So it's the y coordinates are 1 or negative 1. Okay? So when the y value is 1 on the original function, when it's 1 or negative 1, the reciprocal will also be 1 or negative 1. Graph of y equals f of x is shown below. Sketch the graph y equals f of x on the same grid. Okay? So we're going to do four things, which we'll list in a moment. But here's how we graph the reciprocal. So the first step is find the zeros of the original function and draw in an asymptote line. Okay. So you just look along the x-axis. You find the intercepts. Okay. The x-intercepts are the zeros of the original function. There will be an asymptote there. Next, you get the invariant points. <clears throat> and the invariant points are where y equals 1. So just move along the 1 line, or negative 1. And again, just move along the negative 1 line. <clears throat> OK, so first step, asymptote. Second step, invariant points. Third step, find max or mins of any points that you actually can find. So for example, this is negative 8. The reciprocal of negative 8 is negative 1 8, right? So that's a maximum, or that's a minimum point for the original function. It's a minimum. Let's plot the reciprocal of that. And pretty much now we're ready to draw this. So to draw it, <clears throat> let's do the, the tail first, so out here. So as these x values go really large, the reciprocal of that gets really small. As these values go from 1 down to 0, the reciprocals get really large. Same thing happens on this side. Again, these values, so as, x, as the x values get larger negative, the y values get larger positive. And we do this. As the x values, or y values tend to 0, the reciprocal gets really large. Okay, so we've taken care of to the left of the asymptote, to the right, now we're in between. All of these values here will be negative, anything below here. So starting here, I'm going to have to eventually hit this 1 as I do. So all of these values are between negative 8 and negative 1. Their reciprocals will be between negative 1 8 and negative 1, so they'll do this. Okay, it won't actually climb. Okay, so this will come down to the 1, and this will come down to the 1. Rebuild these lines. <clears throat> and then what we're left with is just this little bit here as we go from 1 to 0. In the negative, then these guys are going to become very large. Negative values, and the same thing here, right? Without crossing the asymptote line, so, which I'm about to do again. Okay, and that is how you sketch it, so. And so let's write down the four steps then, right? So the first step is find the zeros of the original function and draw an asymptote line. So zeros of original function.
draw a vertical asymptote. Okay, invariant points. Just trace along the one line, y equals 1. Anywhere you hit the curve, you put down a point. That would be the invariant point. Same with negative 1. Uh, find the reciprocals of max or min. And then the last step is just to draw it out. Okay, I'm just gonna. Yeah. Okay, so connect points. <coughs> With a smooth curve. Do not cross asymptote. Right, so I think the next couple of pages are just basically going to do this. Uh, the graph of y equals f of x is shown below. Use the above steps in your conclusions about blah, blah, blah to sketch the graphs where indicated. State all of the invariant points in the equations of the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Okay, so <clears throat> first step. Zeros of the original function becomes vertical asymptote. Second step, invariant point, 1 and negative 1. There are no max or min points on this. So all we can do is say, well, as these values get really, really large, then the reciprocal values will get small. As these values tend to 0, then the reciprocal values will get very large. As these values tend to zero, so they're going down, the reciprocal values are going up. And <clears throat> these values are getting large, so we're coming down. <clears throat> Vertical asymptote, it's a line that has an equation. This is x equals 2. Horizontal asymptote will be y equals 0. And the invariant points, you can fill them in. points, we need the coordinates. <clears throat> so what have we got? Uh, 0, 1. And 4, negative 1. Okay. Next one, another straight line. <clears throat> Same. Uh, okay, got an asymptote. Got invariant point. Here and here. <clears throat> no max or min. <clears throat> right? So as these values go down, reciprocal values go up to the asymptote. As these values go up, reciprocal values come down towards zero. These values again coming to the asymptote. And these values getting larger in the original function get smaller in the reciprocal function. <clears throat> Vertical asymptote, x equals negative 3.5. Horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. And invariant point, negative 3, 1. And negative 4, negative 1. Two more, these are uh, quadratics. 
<coughs> okay, find the zeros. Those are your asymptotes. Go along y equals 1, here, here. Go along y equals negative 1, here, and here. Find the reciprocals of any particular point. This is a little bit over 6, it would be like 1 sixth. Join the points with a smooth curve. So this middle part here, we already know what that's going to look like, right? Looks, looks like a parabola opening up. It's not a parabola, but it looks like. And we know what the ends look like, right? As we approach the asymptote line, and as we go out this way, we go to 0. And there's the... You know what, the 20 second sketch, right? Doesn't, doesn't take long to do these. <clears throat> Asymptotes, x equals negative 3, x equals positive 4, horizontal, y equals 0. Invariant points, uh, your guess is as good as mine, they're negative 3.2, negative 1, uh, negative 2.8, <coughs> one, <coughs> excuse me, three, what do we got? It's called 3.81 and 4.2. Negative one. Okay, one more. Now this one's a little different, <coughs> right? Because there are no x-intercepts. So there will be no vertical asymptotes. Nowhere is this undefined. Okay, invariant points. There are no invariant points. There's nothing along y equals 1. Uh, max or min, well, so we know that's 2. Its reciprocal is going to be 1 half. This is 4. Reciprocal is going to be 1 quarter. Here's a 4. This will be 1 quarter. This graph, and then the values get large, is going to look like this. <clears throat> Vertical asymptote, none. Horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. Invariant points are none. Okay. That's a that's a crappy drawing. That's not much better, but it's you know, it, it kinda looks like a little curve with a little bump in the middle, right? drops off either side. <laughs> All right, a couple more vertical asymptotes. This does have zeros on the original function, so we sketch in a vertical asymptote. Invariant points here, 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 and what? And here. And the usual. Now, this isn't a, uh, it's not a parabola, right? But it's still, it has the idea of having a maximum point so that we get one third here. And so from this point here, we're going to head to the one. And then as these values get smaller, we're going to head up the asymptote. And the same thing is going to happen here. And then the usual base, right now we just basically say this is kind of the usual at this point, right? Which is down the asymptote and over, right? Not crossing the asymptote, so. That over a bit. Okay, vertical asymptotes. Uh, what do we got? 1.5, negative 3. Horizontal asymptote, again y equals zero. Invariant points, negative two, one, one, one. Uh, negative four, negative one, and two, negative one. Please. 
statement. <laughs> Uh, as f of x approaches negative infinity, then 1 over f of x is negative and approaches 0. Okay, so we'll just run through these fairly quickly. Negative and approaches 0. If f of x is less than negative 1, like negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, then 1 over f of x is negative and large. Or sorry, negative and small. If f of x is equal to negative 1, then 1 over f of x is equal to negative 1. If f of x is negative and approaches 0, then 1 over f of x is negative and approaches infinity. If f of x is equal to 0, then 1 over f of x is undefined. If f of x is positive and approaches 0, then 1 over f of x is positive and approaches infinity, right? It's going to get really large. If f of x is equal to 1, then 1 over f of x is equal to 1. If it's greater than 1, then 1 over f of x is small and positive. <laughs> if f of x approaches positive infinity, so if it's getting really, really large, then 1 over f of x is positive and approaches 0. Okay, That's just a summary right, of what we've done. You might have to spend some time looking through it. but Here's the graph of the reciprocal of the form y equals 1 over ax plus b, which means ax plus b is linear. right? It's a straight line, like 3x plus 2. This is its reciprocal, where a and b are non-zero constants. And what we need to do is sketch the graph of the original function. So what we do now is we say, well, OK, where is the asymptote? There's an asymptote that runs here. The asymptote of the reciprocal is the 0 of the original function. So there's a point. The invariant points will also be on this. So they're there and there. That's pretty much all I need to get a straight line, right? I've got three points now. I didn't even really need the 0, but that's kind of helpful. And so from here, we can actually figure out the slope. This is 1, 2, and over 1. So 1, 2, over 1. If I want to draw this line, I'll keep going. And 2 down and over 1. And 2 down and over 1. <laughs> OK. So there's our original line, right? So if you're starting with the graph of the reciprocal, then you're looking for the asymptote. That's the zero of the original. You've got the invariant points. <coughs> and there we go. Determine the equation of the original function. Well, we got a y-intercept. So this tells me that b is equal to 5. And that's 2 and 1. So m is equal to 2. So the equation is y equals 2x plus 5. Wouldn't it be minus 5? Minus 5, you're right, sorry. B is negative 5. Y equals 2x minus 5. Give you an hour on the quiz, so. Let's say we're done.